Just approaching 11 minutes past seven. Good morning, you're watching Breakfast from BBC News. Now, pressure is growing on Saudi officials to explain how the journalist Jamal Khashoggi died in the country's consulate in Istanbul. Now, this comes after the kingdom that claimed Mr Khashoggi, a critic of the Saudi government, had lost his life during a fistfight. However, Turkish officials claim they have evidence that he was murdered. We'll speak now to the editor of the Arab Digest, Oliver Miles. Oliver, thank you very much for your time this morning. Is there any credibility in the Saudi regime's version of events as to what happened? No, very little, I think. Uh, it's just conceivable, I suppose, that um, somebody acted without proper authority. This has happened in other cases in other countries, including in England many hundreds of years ago. But um, I don't believe it. No, I think that the, the, I'm afraid the Saudis are doing a, a rather inept cover up. And if the Turks go ahead and, and uh, publish the information that they have, as they say they're going to, and if it is as they've been saying for two weeks, they've been drip feeding more and more information about it, I think the, um, the Saudis are going to be exposed as, as lying. And it's the boldness of their actions, isn't it? The fact that this took place on foreign soil where he thought that he would be safe in Turkey. What needs to be done? What response does there need to be from the international community to, to put pressure on them to come clean here and, uh, and perhaps then take responsibility for their actions? Well, I think that the first thing we've got to do is wait for the Turks to, to come up with the information which they say they're going to publish. They, they repeated yesterday, after the Saudis had uh, admitted that, that he was killed in the consulate, after that, they, when they had the opportunity, I think, if they wanted to sweep it under the carpet, so to speak, uh, no, they said, we're going to go ahead and publish. And if they publish the information they have, that will mean that, uh, it, that the pressure on Saudi Arabia will grow enormously. What should we do? I think uh, if, if the information comes out, if that develops as I'm expecting it to develop, what we must do is stop selling arms to Saudi Arabia because it's the only thing we can do which will really affect them. Um, and we should do it in conjunction with the Americans. It's no good doing it by ourselves because as it happens, uh, although lots of countries sell arms in the Middle East, uh, the, the, by far the largest suppliers to Saudi Arabia are America and Britain. And I think we've got a big responsibility there. Those weapons are being used in, an, in a war which has created an enormous humanitarian catastrophe with literally millions, millions of people on the edge of famine. Well, that's a really important point to make, isn't it? Because let's face it, uh, the Saudi regime has had a highly questionable human rights record for many, many years. Its involvement in the war in uh, Yemen and the deaths of innocent civilians there have also put it in the spotlight. And yet no action has been taken. Will the death of one journalist, and it is a tragedy, actually make any difference and um, generate, I guess, enough motivation to governments like the UK government to actually act? Well, it's, it's, it's curious, isn't it, that the death of one journalist should, should in a way, be, carry more weight than, than the death of, of tens of thousands of Yemenis. Uh, but that's, that's life. And the fact is that this is now, this is now the well, to use the cliche, it's the straw that's going to break the camel's back. And uh, we, we've really got to do something, but we've got to do it with the Americans. And what I've found rather surprising myself is that as this crisis has developed, there's been very, very strong wording from, not from the Amer American administration, I think President Trump would like to sweep it under the carpet, but, but the, the Congress, uh, some of the senators who've been close to Saudi Arabia in the past have been using very strong language. They, they are determined to do something and we should encourage them. Yeah. But this is big business, isn't it? The arms trade um, generates millions and millions of pounds in revenue for this government. It takes a strong government to stand up to that kind of industry. So it's whether they've got the guts to do it. Yes, that's true. But you, you, you should keep this in perspective. It is, a, it is an important industry. Um, and uh, it's, we've worked very, very hard to achieve this, these sales to Saudi Arabia. But uh, people sometimes talk as though the whole British economy hung on it and it's not the case. We sell more industrial goods to Saudi Arabia than we do weapons and we sell more to countries like the Netherlands and Belgium than we do to Saudi Arabia. So let's keep it in perspective. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Much appreciated. Oliver Miles, former diplomat.